Summary of the Playboy of the Western World by J. M. Singh At the beginning of the 20th century, the events of the Playboy of the Western World take place in a shabby tavern located in the rural area of the northwest region of Ireland. Margaret Flaherty, better known as Pajean Mike, is the young barmaid at the pub. She is making a list of the things she needs for her second cousin, Sean Keogh's wedding. Pajean tells Sean that she is afraid she will be left alone in the pub all night because her father, Michael Flaherty, who owns the pub, is going to awake. Sean is too scared of what Father Riley, the local priest, would think if he stayed the night with Pajean. This is especially true since he needs the priest's okay to marry his cousin. Even worse, Sean makes things worse by telling Pajean that on his way over, he heard what sounded like a young man groaning wicked like a maddening dog in a ditch. Pajean is mad that Sean was too afraid to look into it. Soon, Michael Flaherty and his friends Jimmy Farrell and Philly O'Cullen show up. The three guys are about to go to the wake, where they will drink a lot and spend the whole night. Pajean tells her dad that she is afraid of being alone at night. Sean runs past his future father-in-law and out of the pub as Michael, Jimmy, and Philly try to get him to stay the night. Soon, Sean comes back, scared that the man in the ditch is after him. He comes in. His name is Christy Mahone. He is dirty, tired, and scared, and he is running away from the police. Michael, Jimmy, Philly, and Pajean question Christy about what he did wrong, and he finally admits that he killed his father, which is called patricide. His father was killed when he hit him over the head with a loy while they were in a potato field, he says. Folks in the area think that Christy must have had a good reason to kill his da, and they are very amazed by his bravery. Seeing a chance, Michael offers Christy the job of potboy, which will give Pajean someone to watch over her overnight. Philly, Michael, and Jimmy go to the wake. Sean offers to stay because he is afraid about Christy being in the pub. Pajean tells him to go on then to Father Riley. Christy tells Pajean more about his life and how his father was killed when he is left alone. He talks about how hard life was in the country and how cruel his father was. She calls him handsome during this talk, and the two of them start to like each other. Widow Quinn, a 30-year-old woman who killed her husband, shows up at the club soon enough. Father Riley and Sean told her to take Christy back to her house with her, but Pajean is strongly against the idea. The two women fight over Christy until he finally says he has to stay at the pub. Christy is in his first nice bed in a long time and feels great luck about his new situation. He wishes he had killed his father sooner. The next morning is Act 2. Christy looks at his face in a mirror and thinks about how Pajean and Widow Quinn are interested in him. Four girls from the village, Susan Brady, Sarah Tansy, Honor Blake, and Nellie McLaughlin, go to the pub to try to catch a look of the boy who killed his father. They find Christy and give him gifts from their farms even though he is trying to hide. When they see the mirror he's trying to hide behind his back, they laugh and say, those who kill their fathers are surely a vain lot. The local girls are told by Widow Quinn to make Christy breakfast. Christy uses a chicken bone as a tool to tell the story of how he killed his father, as asked for by Widow Quinn and the girls. He seems to enjoy the attention. Pajean walks in and tells Widow Quinn and the girls to leave. Irritated, she makes fun of Christy by telling him that the village girls, who she says are in touch with the peelers, local police, could make the police come after him. He says, I'll miss waking up next to you, Pajean, another dawn of the year until the two of us do arise to hope or judge with the saints of God, and then he leaves the pub and moves on. She gives in in the end and tells him he'll be safe at the pub. When Sean and Widow Quinn come in, they tell Pajean that her sheep are acting up and get her out of the pub. Sean offers Christy a one-way ticket to America and his best clothes if she will leave the pub for good. He does this while Pajean is out of hearing because he is afraid that Christy will get in the way of his marriage to Pajean. When Christy takes the clothes, but not the ticket, Widow Quinn and Sean come up with a plan for Widow Quinn to marry Christy in return for a ram, a cow, and permission to cross Sean's property. As Christy walks around in his new clothes and enjoys his newfound fame, he sees his father, Old Mahone, walking near the pub. He is hurt but not dead. 
Mahong comes in and asks Widow Quinn if she has seen his son. He calls him a fool and the laughing joke of every woman. Christy quickly hides behind the door. She buys Christy some time by saying she thinks she saw him going to the beach to catch a boat. Mahone then heads that way. Crow Quinn is asked by Christy not to tell Pajin that his father is still living. She tells him that she will give him a good life if he marries her instead of going after Pajin, since they both killed or tried to kill someone. Christy is committed to marrying Pajin and asks Widow Quinn for help. She agrees to keep his secret in exchange for food from the pub when he gets married to Pajin. In the evening of the same day, Act 3 takes place. Jimmy and Philly are in the pub talking about how well Christy did at the village games and sports. They notice how often he talks about killing someone. At that moment, Old Mahone comes back. He shows the two men the cut on his head and says that his son hit him, which makes Philly suspicious. When Widow Quinn walks in, she is shocked to see Mahone again. After saying that his wound was caused by a tinker, Mahone changed his story when he heard about Christy Mahone. She tries to convince Jimmy and Philly that Mahone is crazy. This makes Jimmy change his mind, but Philly still thinks old Mahone could be Christy's father. Madam Quinn tells Mahone that the clapping he hears outside is for a young lad, the champion playboy of the Western world. Mahone looks outside and is sure that the guy he sees is Christy. Widow Quinn tells him that he must be crazy because he just called his son a loser, which is not the kind of person who would win over the whole village. Mahone thinks for a short time that he has lost his mind and runs away. Jimmy and Philly follow him. Christy walks in with a group of fans that includes Pajin and the town girls. The crowd gives him awards for beating them at sports. Christy needs a short break from all of their attention, so Pajin tells them to leave. As a result of his success, Christy uses poetic language to paint a picture of their future together and gets Pajin to marry him. Michael walks in, still drunk from the wake and with Sean's help. Pajin and Christy finally get him to agree that they should get married. The thought of his grandkids becoming little gallant swearers instead of puny weeds like Sean makes him even more sure. Just as Michael joins Pajin and Christy's hands to celebrate their engagement, Mahone comes in a third time. The crowd and widow Quinn then follow. He goes after Christy and beats him up. Christy tries to get everyone to think that Mahone is a crazy stranger, but they don't listen. They quickly blame him for lying to them, with Pajin being especially upset with Christy for being an ugly liar. Christy gets more and more upset and follows Mahone out of the bar with Aloy. He gives him another blow outside, thinking this one will kill him. Leading the crowd is Michael, who is worried that now that Christy has killed someone in their community, the peelers, the cops, will come and bother them. They choose to tie Christy up with rope and hang him. Pajin is still very angry and threatens Christy with fire. Christy fights back hard and bites Sean on the leg. The old man crawls back into the pub as Christy is being pulled toward the door. He asks Michael why Christy is tied up, and Michael's sorry answer is that they have to take care of Christy themselves to keep everyone safe. Mahone takes Christy's chains off and tells her that he and his son are going together. As they walk away, Christy says with confidence that he will be the gallant captain from now on and his father will be the hen slive. Christy prays for the people who work in the pub and says he will go romancing through a romping lifetime from this hour to the dawning of the judgment day. With Christy gone, Sean tries to talk to Pajin about getting married, but she hits him in the head instead. After putting on a blanket, she starts crying out in wild lamentation, I've lost him surely. I've lost the only playboy of the Western world. About the author. Johnny M. Singh was born in a town of Dublin. Singh's father died soon after, so he and his four brothers were raised by their very religious mother. He didn't go to school because he was sick. At first, Singh wanted to be a musician, so he went to Dublin's Trinity College to study music theory, Irish history, and the language. He moved to Germany in 1893 to study music more, but stage fright stopped him from reaching his singing goals. Later, while studying at the Sorbonne in Paris, Singh met the poet W. B. Yeats, who would become his lifelong friend. 
Yates famously told Singh to give up Paris and spend time on the Aran Islands off the west coast of Ireland in order to write about a life that had never been written about. Back in Ireland in 1897, he had a swollen gland taken out. This was an early sign of Hodgkin's disease that had not yet been identified. Yates told Singh to learn about the people of the Aran Islands, so he did. I then started writing plays. He was very active with the Abbey Theatre in Dublin. Yates and others started it so that Irish culture could be shown through art. People thought Singh's sixth play, The Playboy of the Western World, was unfairly degrading to the Irish people because it tried to show country Irish life and language. It caused riots at its first performances. Not long after that, he got engaged to Molly Allgood, who played Pajin Mike in the same play. It was while Singh was writing this play that his health got worse. He died in a Dublin care home when he was 37 years old. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.